going right now, oh, and yeah? it's pretty hype. Are you listening to this right now? What? It's this oh, TI, no, I've, I've the TI Battle Pass I, 2017. I, I bought it when I woke up, and I haven't... I've, I, I claimed the level 1 and level 2 and level 3 rewards, but I didn't claim anything else. I bought the... I know, it was a lot of clicking. I tried I to find a claim all. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I just could not be bothered. I'm going to go home tonight and like claim all and probably buy another like 50 levels worth of points or something stupid like that. But No, I've, wow. I've, I've not actually looked at it too, uh, too in-depth. Unfortunately. Well, I, all I can say is I hope we get a Crystal Maiden here. I mean, it's probably going to be a Warlock, I'm sure, but if we do get a Crystal Maiden and we get that Immortal, big fan right here. The Snowman, top top notch, Valve. Very pleased with that one. <laughs> you seem uh, so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an Ogre. Um, That's pretty Cloud9 of them. It is. So these two teams, Cloud9, they're, they're in the loser's bracket. They're in the lower bracket, these two teams. Oh, em that's not happy, uh, Gary. No, em Empire got knocked down by NIP 2-0, and C9, we saw them the other day lose 2-1 to Effect. So this series, you know, it's the end of the road for one of these teams, unfortunately. That's how that's how quickly we're getting getting through our bracket. After this game will be the upper bracket match between NIP and Effect. So that one will be... That'll be interesting to see, I think, how those two teams match up against each other. But C9 against Empire, I feel like I feel like both of these teams have very kind of interesting ways of, of analyzing and looking at the game. And they definitely have their own styles of drafting and styles of picks. But I kind of have to just like straight up favor Team Empire because they've got Chappie and FN who have been these dominant forces from like safe lane and mid lane for the past couple of months. While yeah. Cloud9, I, I don't know about you, but it feels like they've been on... Been on a bit of a uh, sort of downcline, down de decline, downcline. Oh my god, <laughs> a bit of a decline, downcline. You, you idiot. Um, since, I think since they've they kind of peaked a little, right? At WESG, yeah. like they got pretty far, and everyone was really hyped about them, and they were probably feeling really good about themselves, and they looked nice. And then it it's kind of tough, I think, after that when you don't like win the actual tournament, maybe you lose a little bit of that motivation, or it gets tougher. And then of course there isn't as much of that competition for them during that major season. It kind of we go in waves of like a lot of tier one Dota, and it can be tough for them to uh, to find a lot of matches and tournaments because no one wants to run these side tournaments and stuff Silence. in the middle of that. Um, so, I'm sure you know this is again they're still kind of stuck in the same stuff. I mean, I've seen this kind of stuff from them so many times. Be it the ogre um, and then the sniper for baby knight or the silencer for baby knight. This could still just be a position five support possibly, but uh, I, I don't remember the last time I saw Cloud Nine and went, oh, this is new. No, ex exactly. Um, yeah, I, th I think WSG was the last time I had that feeling was when they ran like Five Sven support for Neuer and he was roaming around and they did like sem like mm. almost aggro tri lanes, but they would sort of swap things up a little bit and they Dyer had these unconventional ideas that were working out, you know, new strats and new uh, new gimmicks to play with. But I, I'm fully behind you. They've kind of been just going through the motions almost, it feels like. But ma maybe this is it. Maybe this is the tournament where they find their groove again because I feel like they fizzled out way too early. Mm -hmm. like you said, oh, they yeah, they, peaked, they still have room to grow for sure. T Team Empire um, are probably still kicking themselves, you know, getting knocked out of Kiev qualifiers by Na'Vi, but then doing okay. so well at DAC. Reserve time. It's, uh, it's a weird team. They're, uh, they're some lads. They're, this is revenge for, uh, for Cloud9 after getting 3 0 in that best of five that these two back. played like three weeks ago. So. <laughs> revenge. Gotta, gotta, gotta at least get one win here, guys. Okay. Well, Magnus Warlock, no Legion Commander to pair up there. Uh, it's gonna be most likely, you know, the, your Spectre, your Ten Juggernaut, one of those remaining. stupid heroes, the Agi carries to get buffed up with Empower. Like, like, like you can't ban all of them, right, as Cloud9. You, you just got to try and say, what else do they want? Yep. Uh, I would say, you know, Jug normally too, but he's fallen off quite a bit. Uh, not uh, the biggest, most popular hero these Dyer days. Maybe just go for the Lifestealer instead in terms of a ban here from Cloud9. Uh, of course, it also matters as to what they're thinking about. Um, the benefit is that both Jug and Lifestealer suffer pretty heavily under Silence. So if there's someone else they really want to get rid of, like the Wombo combo of a Faceless Void or something like that, Ten if they're just like super remain. afraid of that kind of stuff, they could. But um, maybe the Ember as well if they Five don't really have a lot remain. of like heavy lockdown in mind. Oh, that is the we'll jug just be the, the Jug, though. Kind of safe standard one, and I guess if you pair up like you know uh, Shadow Word and Healing Ward, there's no way you're killing true. the Jug when he's pushing high ground. You just shove the two heals on him with Empower, and you say, "Yep, okay, we're breaking high ground here, guys." Yeah, they can aggro tri lane very easily as well, and then yeah. you get this. And Magnus can sometimes have some very advantageous matchups for himself if he does one v one safely. Yeah, that's right. Remaining. Well, Empire, 
What's your plan, guys? What's your plan? Kind of interesting exactly. they banned the Ursa themselves. I guess it is a hero that Ace does like to pick up, but mm -hmm. Ursa's been such a CIS special the past, like, two months. Mid, safe lane, roaming, wherever the hell you want to put him. <laughs> just, just throw out the Ursa. I think VP showed that off pretty nicely at the Major. I mean, no one was picking up Ursa every now and then, but I, d I don't know whether it warrants a first phase ban. I don't know. He's a good hero, I have to say. Uh... I could see, speaking of this whole idea of like the aggro trine and stuff like that, I think that's probably something to be considering here if you're Cloud9. Um, if you if you don't want to go for like these full aggro scenarios and stuff like that, the number one thing you could consider would be a, a Timber Saw in the safe lane maybe for Ace. Like they have been known to play that. It's very good against the Magnus. It can actually zone him out. Oh. Uh, and, and the hero does jungle pretty slow. Oh. See, I was, I was just thinking, Dying like, with the silencer, I, I for a second considered the Meepo for Cloud9. That is something they've pulled out in the past, but against Fatal Bonds and RP. And Chappie. Who, and uh... and Chappie, <laughs> who's a Meepo player? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. But it's not it's not remain. awful. Like, you, you look at the Wombo combo from Empire, it's like, okay, that's nasty, but Five seconds uh, they've remain. got cooldowns. And with a global silence behind you, uh, Shadowfiend comes out. So does that does that Radiant move Silencer in your mind to support or one? I more? think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't really envision a safe lane Silencer here so far, at least. Definitely possible, but uh, I would I would edge it onto the position five at this point. Okay. Well, Ten they've got the nice Ogre three. Bloodlust Shadowfiend combo going, regardless. See if they want to fully commit for a clock or something here. I mean. Of course, the, the classic, right? Get yourself those little uh, the souls to start the game. Oh, uh, yeah. How many offlaners are even left, though? Quite a few. There's we still have pretty much everyone, actually. Yeah, there's a fair amount. I do like the clockwork, though. I was thinking about Beastmaster, you know, to stop that one hero standing high ground that's buffed to all hell. Yeah. You can catch him. Combos up nicely with global as well. Roar into global. Pick off one target and move on. Ten seconds remaining. They're also not, at least not commonly Venge players for um, Cloud9, which is the other one that we we'll sometimes look for for that high ground guy, but we still didn't even know who it was until now, and it's going to be the PA. Magnus PA. Lovely. A lovely combination. Yeah. <laughs> really Quite is. good. And in lane, is, like, in lane, it's super nasty as well, because you've got PA with you know Dagger, Blink, Ten and Evasion, so it's hard to zone her out, and you've got Shadow Word from Warlock. But once she reaches like level, no, level 4 or so, the Warlock can just go and get level 6 somewhere, go and leech experience mid lane or stack and pull. I don't think there are, there are many off laners that can deal with a PA 1v1 at all. Like even Beastmaster struggles because she just daggers the boars. Yeah, not, not a fun time. And uh, I guess at this point then, so... With our Doom, I wonder if this is... I'm still kind of feeling the position for Doom. This should be right. And it'll just be Ghost Stick on the mag. And then PA, of course, could theoretically go mid against the Shao if they wanted to. But Empire do like to run mid mag. That's something that FN pulls out like way more often than other mid laners. Like, I think Empire is probably one of the few teams that still runs mid Magnus. So that that's a potential as well. It's off lane Doom, mid Magnus, PA safe lane, and they're looking for... It would depend on that. Well... I was going to say, if they get the clock, I think almost guaranteed they don't want Magnus mid, like if they pick clock right here, because that would just be a dumpster show, I'm sure. Like, if, he, if this Shafin shows up with souls and you're a Magnus mid, your life is just awful with an ogre there. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's literally just done. Like, <laughs> the what lane is do? over. <laughs> how, how many so. souls can you get? If you do it, I've is seen teams get 12, 12, but I'm pretty sure you can get... Uh, if you really tried, you could get 15. I'm pretty sure. If it was execute, I've never seen a team executed flawlessly. But if you have three people dedicated to doing it, the Shadow Fiend can get two souls every single time off the cogs. Yeah. So you should be able to get a lot in the fountain. But most teams only ever get like seven. I just yeah. don't think anyone ever sits in a lobby oh, and practices I've it. I've seen a lot of sevens. I think I've seen like 13 Radiant once. I can't remember who mm. did it, but that was pretty sick. Centaur for Cloud9 though. Uh, pretty good at disengaging from what Empire have. Also, it's pretty good initiation against a PA pre BKB, but in in lane, I'm still Ten very scared for them. Remaining. Yeah, she's not the easiest hero to kite around, of Five course, with the uh, the blink strike and stuff too. So that kind of suffers a little bit in terms of the overall value of Stampede. Uh, but at the same Five time, if remaining. you know, if we were still thinking about that clockwork, no. she's just gonna hop right out of the old cogs and whatnot and. Back. 
seeing this, they'll say, yeah, we're not going to let you get the ace timber saw. Not happening because, again, very common thing for them. Uh, Would have really hurt some of their matchups uh, in, in terms of like, the versatility of maybe this Magnus or Doom. Because, we I, again, they could still just go back for a four and throw this Doom in the off lane, the Magnus mid, and the PA safe lane. Uh, that's definitely not, uh, uh, not completely out the window here for Team Empire. Hmm. I'm just wondering what they pick up as their last for C9. I'm, I'm thinking like a Lycan or a Clinks or something that can, you know, destroy towers with the help of the Shadow Fiend, but isn't too worried about the Doom being thrown onto them. Wraith King, Wraith, Wraith King for Ace, maybe? Yeah, I think they might take a lot of time. Unfortunately, they don't have as much time left, sadly, because they could be thinking, like, can we run the Silencer 1? I mean, I know we said it, like, it looks more likely it'll be the Silencer. All right, with the the Razor Band, now it seems more likely there's someone else coming out here for position 1, then. Probably some sort of a melee core. What is that? What is that? Is that Razor Band just meant to, like, say, leave our Shadow Fiend alone? Ten seconds. I guess they were thinking about lane dominators, and they didn't expect it to be an OD. King. There is the hey, King. there he is. It's the Wraith King. Wraith I mean, not a very King. common hero, so, so like the very well called out. I guess it's Doom, so to be fair, yeah. kind of yeah. common against Doom. That, but. That, that is the main reason. Like The, the main yeah. things that I was, I was struggling about was the fact, you know, you want someone who buys an MKB at some point. So that's why I said Clinks and Lycan, because they've been very often, you know, Lycan goes Mom Armlet, then MKB or BKB or something just for the damage. Yeah. Um, Clinks, because remaining. you're so bloody tanky, you don't really care, and buys MKB naturally, but a, a Wraith King Reserve with type. Bloodlust assassin. is still very, very squishy. I, I wonder if he's going to go that Midas build, or if he'll think about the you know the old drums, blade mail, blink builds that we used to see a hell of a lot of, if he goes and reverts back into that. Because Cloud9 yeah. could get walked over. I do not disagree with you. Look at these lane matchups. So you get the final advantage here from Team Empire and taking that TA in the end. And it will be just be uh, Maposhka on the Doom and Ghost Stick on the offlane Magnus. So pretty much what one would expect. FN on the PA. Huh. So if you're the center of Warrunner, you're coming to the offlane. You have Warlock, very obnoxious up against you. So you're probably going to be looking towards some jungling relatively early. Plus there's going to be a Doom rotating around that you don't know what to do with. Hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah, Ten some spooky stuff, remaining. isn't there? Uh, there's an ogre against the TA mid, though. Five so Ignites remaining. might be able to help bully her quite a bit early on. Yeah, there's also, there's also the fact that I don't think Ghost It can go to lane either, right? Against the Silencer plus Ogre and Wraith King, potentially. So Yeah, if it's Mag just the Silencer, it should be okay, I think. But he's, Silencer he's, and the Wraith King mid is. But he's pretty much just got to buy Iron Talon and go jungle, right? Yeah, it's a pretty big risk if you don't. Because if you if you don't buy Iron Talent to start, you're going to buy Brown Boots. And then if you die once with Brown Boots, your life is just, like, over. Hmm. It's very difficult to get to Iron Talent after that. It is. Uh, it's going to be a rough life for both of these offlaners, honestly. And it doesn't look like there's any hints of aggression, I don't think. I don't think anyone's matchup is that bad. Uh... Oh, 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 we Ooh, get this in the... I forgot about the competitive games. <laughs> I wasn't uh, expecting uh, this. Zeros. Oh, dear. Tower level zero against tower level zero. I mean, oh, surely God. one of these guys has a battle pass. And it's Apparently just, they don't. And it's just not working in... in uh, lobby games. Oh, I don't know. Prepare for well, that. no tower levels uh, for us then, I guess. Uh, how disgraceful. Sad. How sad, how sad. Oh yeah, you're right. They do have battle passes, and it's just not working. Yeah. Oh, how depressing! C9. Oh, some very of the quick. Ghostic even has 103. Really? Oh. He's got a level 103 compendium already. Rise is very sneaky. He has smoked and TP'd. He has placed an observer ward. Or has he? No, he's holding the observer ward. Just the sentry he's placed, actually blocking up one of these camps. So yeah, the the fact that Magnus is well. What, what I thought was definitely going to go Iron Talon Jungle. He actually has a poor man shield. And he's going to show himself here doing the little, the, the derpiest taunt in existence. And Ryze is going to realize that the sentry he's gone to place sure may have been, may have been amazing. But in this case, it looks like Seven Magnus wants to stay on lane for a bit. I think he's just that confident that the, uh, the ogre is going to be mid. And then plus, once Doom just has a little bit of jungle stuff, he can come top. So oh. it should work out in the end. Um, shouldn't be too bad. This sentry is, yeah, uh, much of a, a bother, though. Just for the doom, for the most part. It's kind of like Enchantress, where you, you block off a couple of these camps to hurt her rotations. Yeah. Same idea with the doom, right? Absolutely. 
Ah, that's, that's true. Well, Chappy on this PA going to get his bounty rune. <laughs> King L behind him on that bot lane. And what, what's C9 doing? Centaur plus one? Or is it just Centaur on their own? Yeah, you're right. It's going to be Baby Knight SF with Neuer's Ogre. Both in the mid lane. So Empire match this. FNTA. As well as Miposhka Doom. He's heading over to these creep camps. What's he going to find, Trent? going to find a block camp and a medium camp. Hopefully. They, uh... This ward down here is also really nice because it, it spots out the fact that no one from the Radiant came and warded here either. Um, just because it was nice and early. So the Ogre should know, or at least he can have a good idea that there's no one looking at this vision. So he kind of has free rotations down bottom as well. Which can be handy. So he can like play this area, right? Like this lets you do this kind of a, a harassing from mid rather than playing it from up here. It's pretty neat. He can just hide back in the trees as well if he wants to. Well, Doom with the brute, uh, with the brown boots, trying to stop Rise from stacking and or pulling. He's gonna <laughs> draw the aggro actually there. <laughs> Meposhka finds himself a little spot where he's still hit by them. So it's also worth noting, uh, we've seen this a couple times, this matchup with the TA and the Ogre. If you get, you get this meld level 1, I, I see some people miss it, or like the Ogre will often bring a sentry so that it doesn't work, but they didn't bring a sentry this time, so FN has already dodged out uh, twice now. Oh, well, the Ignite? Yeah. Oh, very nice. It's a crafty little one. It's very good. You have to like fake it out though. <laughs> if you're Noya, right? You gotta like try and beat him. <laughs> yeah. Animation cancel on that ignite. That's the Joe Rotten taking a lot of a lot of pain. Warlock and PA just spamming out daggers and they're like zoning out the centaur. But Ghostic, he's looking good. Ghostic hasn't even spent a tango yet, Trent. He's level two and a half. He's bought his quelling blade. He looks perfectly fine here, and like you were saying, the fact that Ogre has sat mid and they've had this Doom kind of roaming around in the jungle tracing down Rise has meant it's been more of a 1v1 plus 1v1 than a uh, uh, 2v2. Oh, uh, nice move there as well by Mposhka just to like, take this bounty room. Look how much harass he gets. Uh, does he get this kill even? He needs w one more. Oh, no, he needs two more hits. Barely Rise gets into the trees. The stun comes through. The, oh, the body block as well. Can he get out? No, he's going to die here under the tier one. The shockwave won't even finish off Rise. Very, very close for the Doom there to get the first blood, but it's going to be Cloud9 who come out on top. How terrified are you right there as that silencer? You're just like stuck in this tree. You don't want to tango through the other side because you don't know if the Magnus is just going like, to skewer over in shockwave just like that. and Barely lives, so a bit too ham there, I would say, yeah. from the Doom. You're pretty much going, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Then your Wraith King rolls up and oh yeah, I'm not dead. Shadowfiend is pounding this mid lane, by the way. 17 and 12. <laughs> to one. Like, he has 30, 30 CS combined to the one of TA. One. Singular. The power of Ogre, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that sentry oh, drop yeah. this time. Yeah, not having any of that. Yeah. Get out of my lane. <laughs> Good stuff. And TA still has one CS. Level two on the Templar Assassin, while SF is encroaching on that level four already. Oh, this is really, really rough. And FN still getting pounded there with a couple of razors. A punch out from Baby Knight secures what the kill. What was that? I don't know. I think this is FN being very tilted. Yeah, there's no way. That was just awful. I've I've heard him in pub games. <laughs> I've heard him play mid in pub games. One more death and I, I sell my items. I run down mid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Not sure what, uh, yeah, I, I would say that's just tilt, because like, obviously he knows that he's just gonna die, and he just died. He didn't even make an attempt at the meld dodge, so he, I'm pretty sure he knows that sentry was placed down. Oh, for sure. That's the, you know, if I die once, my team will come and help me. <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> Who's gonna come and help, though? The Doom has been spending so much time in the enemy jungle, now actually moving down towards bottom lane. FN, level 3, chasing in onto Baby Knight. The skewer won't land, and Ghost Stick will not be able to help out his TA. Maybe FN can get some good damage down. There's a Mel Strike to secure a CS. He's, oh, look at that. He's up to seven now, Trent. Seven CS. And two denies. Wow. Two denies, dude. <laughs> He's actually getting it done. Rise is being chased by Ghost Stick, though. I'm not sure you go for this, even with a Skewer. He has Skewer Shockwave. And an Arcane. Oh, he's got the Arcane Rune. That's why he's just spamming. That that's fair enough. Ball lane, though. Stop they go in onto up. Warlock. Stomp, double edge. And that's a juicy kill. Good rotation from Noya. Yeah. I mean, mid lane secured. Done my job there. And again, the fact they didn't have that vision. Uh, although there's some relatively fresh wards here now. Uh, but either way, Noya already here. So gets that kill. 
And now they can put a little bit of pressure on a Chappy. Of course, he's doing quite well. Not uh, too shocking. No real contest down here. It's been phase boost against two melee heroes. He should be relatively fine. Should be good. King Air has no boots though, which is a little scary. Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, they'd love to kill off the Centaur or someone here, right? But the team oh, is coming lane. to mid lane. Baby Knight helped out by Noya. Just enough mana for that stun as the shockwave goes the distance, but doesn't have the angle. Kill off the SF. And now, with a with the Ogre moving, I realize that Hester Joe is all alone, but he just TPs away. There's no stuns. The only stuns they have are two ultimates. That is, that that is true. They, they and have chaotic RP, offering. <laughs> and then, like, whatever Doom can find, and he's actually traded out the goal in the head. Oh, dearie me. What does he have now? He's, oh, he, he used the shockwave at bottom lane, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Well, I, I like this. For 1300 net worth lead for Cloud9. This shiny new bar up at the top, the net worth advantage bar. Wow, that looks like a really great idea. Yeah. I bet someone really smart thought of that. And the, the Roshan indicator as well. That's also great. very smart. Also Press very smart. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Haste. Stolen haste from there from a post. <laughs> <laughs> Put the thread in top. What are you giggling at? <laughs> that was a very good segue, actually. Oh, he's just, oh bor he's just borrowing it. He's just, he's just borrowing it, Trent. Horizon's dead here, right? One more slap. Doesn't even need it. Infernal Blade was enough for the Scorched Earth. My Poshu's getting... He's getting into the thick of things. Level 4 nearly there, and he's got his Tranquil Boots ready. It's been slow and steady for Empire, right? But... That's their first kill. That is. I'm still scared of the Shadow Fiend. Or at least, I, I was scared of the Shadow Fiend until a second ago, when I realized he's actually only 900 net worth ahead of the TA. Yeah, pretty crazy considering she has uh, a death, no kills, he has the kill, of and course. He, and but, he, and uh, he had, you know, triple her CS, more, more than triple her CS. <laughs> but uh, now we minutes. start to look though, uh, we got one stack, got, got some ancients here that I'm sure will get stacked, so that'll be the plan. Rotation bottom, Chappy. They can't catch the PA. Too quick, and with a shadow word through, Chappy will be fine. Two man rotation down to help the centaur. Turns into an aggro tri lane of sorts, but I don't know how long they'll stay down here. It just doesn't seem worth it. And we were talking about the uh, ace item build as well. So we had a Wraith King the other day, I believe. Uh, was that? It wasn't ace, was it? I think it was. Uh, it was. Oh, was it? Yeah. And uh, that was for the. Uh... Oh, that's right. It wasn't ticketed. That's why. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh no, it was ticketed, and it was ace. Okay, no, I'm crazy. Either way, he went Midas first, I believe, right? Uh, instead of this, like, armlet or something like that. And yeah. then we ended up having this, like, pretty slow guy who just didn't really join any fights or anything like that. So already, despite having, like, a free lane, he, uh, knocking off of that this time. So do grab King Iron again down bottom. A little Warlock. Does he have his boots yet? He, he does. He's got brown boots, but still not quick enough to get away from Noya. Apparently. But yeah, I, I like this from Ace. And we talked about it during the draft, at the, at the very end, what he's going to go for. Uh, I do hope he goes for the kind of Blade Mail Blink, and then back into Radiance maybe a little bit later. Yeah, I would guess Blink next for sure. I think that's why he's skipping the Midas this game, just so he has his Blink that much faster. I mean, you definitely need it against the TAPA. These heroes yeah. are so mobile, especially once you get your Blink Dagger up on FN. Who uh, is getting Chappie's very... being stomped bottom too. Very close to death. Chappie also has the curse on him. I'll be able to slowly but surely bring him oh. down as long as that arcane curse will take over. Has to just being chased by the doom. Boshka might have put himself in a spot above though as they turn around and kill him as well. Two for nothing. Empire just don't seem to know what's hitting them. All right, C9. This what we're talking about though. I mean, they've had some struggles against Empire lately. Uh, like they got they got three out, and they did look okay in the uh, the best of five. I will say it wasn't like a total stomp. It, it didn't like feel like a three zero, but it was still a three zero. So uh, so far looking pretty good. Baby Knight though, this is a big kill. <laughs> Baby Knight, nice attempt for the TP. They actually go into the RP onto Ogre as well, bringing in two core heroes. They need to finish off Noid to make this worth it, and his TP won't complete either. Well. We were worried about not having stuns. That is a lot of damage from a TA and a PA. I don't think you can just TP home to safety every single time like you usually can. 
That is, whew. That is, like, they're both empowered, and Magnus just comes in and <laughs> allows them to jump on. Can he insta-kill Rise here? No, no, he can't. Maybe, maybe if he got a lucky crit and thrown a dagger, then he'd been able to kill it, but Rise does TP back home to safety, while a DD rune has spawned down at the bottom spot. I'm sure Chappie wants it. Go on. Get the DD. They, they've seen oh. this, right? They had an Observer Ward there just now. Yeah. Get that DD. Go and kill people. Pick it. Pick it up. Do you, oh, do you have this, by the way? With the bottom rune... I mean, you probably, you probably have it, but... The bottom rune is, like, infinitely more difficult to click than the top rune. Uh... I don't know. I haven't noticed that. It, like... It's because of the camera angle. Like you, cl you click it, and your hero gets close enough, and is basically under it. But you haven't quite, oh, you haven't quite like gotten to the rune yet. And I, I thought I was. Uh, I don't know. I never noticed that. I always just shift click them. Oh, I see. But I've never like passed over it without noticing or anything. Because I had that problem a couple of times, and I thought, am I just being dumb here? But I see it all the time in pro games as well. Web there you oh go. god, this TA. A couple of hits and Hestador is dead. One more. No, Chappie's still stunned. The shockwave comes through. It's not enough to kill off the center and then the, the back. The raindrop saved him. Oh, Baby Knight is looking to turn back onto FN. They've got the Shadow Word, but he's slowed a little bit here. Trap will allow them to retreat. And what was it? <laughs> the raindrop saved him from that shockwave, did it? Yeah. You know what it is, Gets? I only play support heroes for the most part. I play support heroes and offlaners. I don't get mid river runes. Oh, I see. I get bounty runes. I'm not a selfish mid player like you. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. The truth hurts, I know. I mean, usually I don't play heroes that buy bottle and collect runes anyway. That's true. Just an invoker play. I just play invoker and sit in lane and <laughs> last hit <laughs> <laughs> kill creeps. Aggressive smoke again from C9. They're aiming so heavily on this bottom lane. Chappie is left alone. Nothing really to blink to behind him. There's a new creep wave coming in, and now he'll be able to escape. He just needs to jump. No, the arcane curse comes in. And they ignite, but they don't commit for it. Look at all these debuffs on him, though. Just like those two heroes, it is kind of crazy. It was like barely any effort, and he loses 500 HP at 12 minutes. That's a lot of harass. 12 minute blink dagger, though. Ghostic. That's pretty big for you. Yeah, that's huge. Arcane boots as well. In a relatively tough lane. Uh, I guess he didn't get pressured too heavily. There were a lot of rotations away from him, but he queues up the Midas next. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition or if he just ends up with like a four staff or something to help kite uh, the Wraith King. But time to make that rotation. Oh, and look look at the timing too. To have these two down here while he just goes. Oh, he catches yeah, both thanks. of the RP. That is beautiful out from Ghost Stick. And even with the Stampede, they don't get away. Chaotic Offering was dropped to make damn sure that they die. Well, this transitions nicely into a push. They just have to make sure that my Poshka doesn't dive on top lane because he's stunned. A few punches out from Ace might be able to secure this one. He's got another stun in three seconds' time. Just needs to juke through the trees to catch the Doom, but he's long gone. He's gone, but the Scorched Earth will heal back up to full as well. Damn, damn, damn. So this is actually very reminiscent of the third game of that best of five because what happened was Cloud9... At the, uh, I want to say the 20, the 25 minute mark, they had a 10k lead, almost 11k, and it, everything was looking great. You know, we were like, all right, finally, C9 are gonna win this game. But they had this chappy PA, and instead of a Magnus, they had a troll warlord. But it was essentially the same idea, where as the game starts to progress and progress, the like they are so good at bringing this hero online and getting him all these kills and stuff. And it doesn't matter if you have this advantage. Like they wiped that advantage off the map so quickly by just nonstop moving around and getting kills with this PA and creating space all across the map. So I kind of see the same thing happening again here, where we have this TA who just wants to like farm ancients and farm neutrals and shit, <laughs> and they are just gonna empower. Oh, it's gonna be gross. I'm still kind of shocked at where FN is sitting right now. 5.5k oh. net worth after being yeah. at 1 CS for the first 4 minutes, but he might die and pay for it as the big gag comes in from Cloud9. FN's still looking, like he's still in a sweet spot where he was from laning stage. Dying there doesn't help too much, but nearly has Desolator completed on the TA. Look at their wards too, here and here. Uh, I wonder if they maybe had an inkling that they were smoking or something like that. The lanes were a little bit pushed out though, so maybe that's just what was throwing off guard. But either way, pay pretty heavily, pretty common ward up against the TA as well, so supports I'm sure will be able to deward that. Well, Tping top to try and defend this. Ace 
he's gone in onto the Doom, and Shadowfiend's moving forward with the Shadow Blade he's just purchased as well. Oh, look at that spacing from Aposhka to keep the blimp on RP, Ghost Stick finds the two of them, and they're just obliterated! Oh, baby knife's gone, and the reincarnation from Wraith King, he does have a blink to get himself a little bit further away to the east. I don't think the chase will continue, but that bait and turn by Team Empire, just so yeah. powerful. And the way, like, the way Maposhka was just walking there, where he was using the exact limits of Scorched Earth to make sure the blink was always on CD from Wraith King, kept them together for the RP. Beautiful realization. And Empire <laughs> in some serious control right now. PA is not going for the Deso. TA should have that completed done soon. Chappie's actually going for a Manta style. Likely to get out of global silence, but you can also dodge, you know, Wraith Fire Blast and hey, even that like arcane curse and the ignite stuff, like we're talking about how yeah, much it's true. affecting him. Like if he take tanks the whole thing, he loses half his HP. I thought one of the funnier things about Kiev was uh, how many Manta Slarks we had. I felt like every Slark game they were building Manta style. It just, I don't know, it looked, struck me as being quite funny. Instead of Not being a very uh, common item, yeah. It's just they, they all just needed it. <laughs> like every game. Yeah, we had a game yesterday where, or the day before, where Ember Spirit, was it Ember and PA? Both had to buy Manta because of some Orchid or something. That's just the most awkward thing in the world. I mean, speaking of awkward, a 600 crit for your final hit from Chappie, killing off the Centaur is pretty awkward for Hester Joe. And the chase is on to Ace. There's Wraith King's doomed up. Poshka's found him and slowed him a decent amount with a stun there as well. The PA jumps forward. The hits come through. The Global Science is out with the Requiem wound up onto two of them. The barrel damage from Baby Knight is huge, but the Golem's dropped and now they turn back onto the SF. Can they finish off Chappie? One more hit is all they need. The miss uphill is in another one. No, he finally dies. And Ghostick is in the middle of them with the Shrine finally used up. They turn back around and kill off the Warlock in the back. TA now looking for the run forward as King Ark killed off Baby Knight with a Shadow Word there. It looked like all the fatal bonds. But Empire get a couple of deaths. It really shouldn't have happened while Cloud9, that wasn't too bad for them. Yeah, good rotation. Saves the Wraith King knowing that he didn't have his ultimate at that time. And now if they were to attempt it again, he'll be ready for it. So pretty big moment. Uh, then of course, you know, Shadow Blade, pretty good item in those scenarios. Even with the Sentry nearby too. Just didn't quite catch Baby Knight, I guess. Yeah, I think Maybe it he just placed it during that. I think it got placed like just as the Requiem came out or something. Yeah. Rough, rough stuff there, but still, we do have a TA on top, but closely followed by these two cores. Uh, massive gap, I would say, uh, coming out in between, like, well, maybe not massive, but, like, when you combine the gap between Magnus and Centaur, and then, like, Doom and Ogre, you can see it. it is widening to quite a bit. You're talking, like, a 2k total uh, when you combine both of those roles. And, uh, the gaps there, so certainly some faster organizations coming up because of that, including that uh, Midas that Ghostick will indeed opt for, so that'll push him towards that level 20 talent as fast as possible. I guess when you know the waves are just going to be insta-cleared, uh, Warlock, yeah, okay. But uh, uh, if you know that waves are going to be insta-cleared by your empowered PA or your TA, oh, that's a big stomp there onto three, but they don't have the follow-through. The TA slowed by the Arcane Curse, but they're going to finish off Hester Joe. Relatively simply, but Doom has actually walked into a pretty difficult spot as Ace turns to whack him down. That almost felt like it was going to be like kind of a, a bait though, where like this Doom dies, but then you're going to lose those two cores. But the rest of uh, Empire not willing to push forward just a little bit. You know, it's like 60% HP or so on both of their uh, cores and the TA and the PA. So did not want to opt into it. There was, I think, a Roche attempt about to be coming out there from Cloud9. It kind of looked like they were grouping for at least thinking about it. So. Maybe uh, just taking that fight will at least dissuade them away from that and still leave that option open for Empire because obviously they can do it extremely quickly. I'm not sure how I feel about these towers, Trent. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a they, fan, they personally. Are, they are even more phallic than usual. They're quite ugly. Like, And that, what's up with like the dire one and like the little growths at the bottom? Oh, they both have little growths that move. Like, what has happened? So, so yeah, go to, go to the dire mid-tier 2 tower. Yeah. Like, does it not look like a dong to you? <laughs> Gareth, please. It's I mean, a like, ta show. like, towers are relatively phallic and columns are phallic, like, in general, but they have gone... It, it feels like they've gone out Gareth, of their way to... don't let the patriarchy get you down, <laughs> man. It feels like they've gone even further out of their way to make it look... Or whatever. 
even has the head on top. In comes Cloud9 looking to stop this Roshan from going down, but Doom is the one on the front lines. The big blink stop from Hester Joe gets them into the pit, but the Invis TA turns back to fight. In comes the Global Science, so they've got to get themselves out of here. PA still in the pit, stunned by Ace, and they've actually taken down the Doom, finally bringing him out with the Golem down onto two. This might be the way to go. The RP has already come out from Ghost catching a couple of them, but they need to output the damage with a blink forward in from Ace. He's going to clear up one, and he looks for the second. This PA not long for this world as Ace is on a mega kill streak, and it looks like they'll be able to find Roshan as well. TA cannot re-enter this battlefield. Might want to steal the Aegis. It is very low. FN, you have to go in now. They're trying to bait this one out, and Rise is up on the front lines, and FN just goes up to Creep Wave to kill a couple of CS. And look at Noya surviving through all of that. The Urn did so much work that fight. He was turfing those things left, right, and center. Couldn't quite save Hester Joe, but obviously still a massive win near the end. And how about that global silence? Like, that is just the lack of respect for that hero that came up from the TA and the PA. They just went their normal builds. I mean, yeah, she's going to build the, uh, the Manta, but it's not done yet. But you just get destroyed. That is, like... Probably the last big fight that they were going to be able to use that Global Silence to its full potential too and uh, get the maximum advantage possible out of it. But next time, with the BKB, with the Manta style, it's unlikely that fight goes as well for C9, for sure. Yeah, it was just unfortunate they didn't have their Silence counter items before that all kicked off. Roshan may respawn in 7 minutes and 5 seconds. Oh, I like that. Stand oh, mute. goodness, that is neat. I think it even gives you a, an actual time. Looks like they thought that was a smoke led by uh, Doom, I guess. And they just stampeded away. Scared there were a bunch of heroes there as they don't have any vision going for the rest of the map. I mean, that's what I would think too. This Doom just shows up here. Everyone, that was, like, this was all empty or whatever. You know, no one was showing up in top lane at the time. So uh, they will now see the TA up there. C9 have this conga line going down mid. There's one hero following another. Yeah, they do not want to lose this Aegis for nothing either. Teeping the SF in as well, the five man down mid. No one's gonna go for the arcane rune just yet. We have the Manton BKB now though. And when's RP? RP's ready. Golem 30 seconds on cooldown. I don't think they desperately need the Chaotic Offering, but they'll go for some trades here. Pushing out the side lanes, Team Empire. Losing out on their mid tier 2, but it looks like they'll get a good chunk of damage on top tier 2, if not take it completely. Because I don't think Cloud9 yeah, are reacting no glyph. to this. They, yeah, they've already used their glyph. Yeah. Alright, easy. So that's definitely a worthwhile trade for the rating, of course. Not having to fight into the Aegis. God, I just I feel so tempted to spam these new emotes, Gareth. What emotes? All the ones from the compendium. There's so many. Have you seen the Invoker Kiss? Oh, I didn't unlock them yet. Oh. Well, I, Did I, I, mean, I don't want to put them in. I, I claimed some. They're pretty some, good. I, I didn't, wait, where's the Invoker Kiss one? Oh, are they further on? Level 24. Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't even claim those yet. That'll be like your new favorite. Sick, dude. Someone, <laughs> Sick. So, someone question marks me in all chat. I just give them the Invoker Kiss, you know? <laughs> oh. So here's another thing. Did you notice that Io is not in the Arcana vote? That's I, like, to me, some people are angry. I'm like, doesn't that guarantee they're going to reveal an Io Arcana at TI? Like, how do people, I mean, that just seems so obvious to me. Yeah, that, There's uh, no way they would just take it out of the vote. Like, at the very least, a remodel, right? Yeah, exactly. Something's clearly happening to Io. Who, who did so they remodel kind of before? They remodeled, remodeled Void, Enigma, Slardar, Zeus? Uh, Viper, Jakiro. Viper, Jakiro. Um, and I'm sure there have been more, obviously. Um, like Earthshaker and... Lion. Lion Epo, got, Puck. Lion got the little face remodel to make him... Uh, Marana. less ugly. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Marana. Win uh, did Windranger get her spine yet? No. No? Windranger is still spineless. And soulless. Yep. Okay. Also true. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, I want that hero to come back. I like playing that hero. She's okay. I don't know. Windranger was like sure one what most played in Dota 1. I wonder what she needs. You know what it is that I love playing her for? It's that double shackle. It is so satisfying to double shackle in a team fight. Like, nothing makes me happier in Dota than a double shackle. You're roaring two people. Yeah. I have 288 double shackles on my that's, that's immortal big. item. That's big if true. Thank you. Yeah. Big if true. Big bigly. Big. I have bigly double shackled. <laughs> Idiot.
<laughs> I, um, yeah, I used to build Battle Fury on Windranger. Oh god. Hey, <laughs> Those were simpler times though. In Yeah, in Dota 1 days, Battle Fury was like the single best like regen and damage item you could buy on any hero. And regardless of not getting the splash on, on Windranger, you bought it anyway. for Because you'd, all, like, you'd always play offlane Windranger and you would always 1v2 lanes. And you'd buy the Perseverance and you'd finish off you know, your, your, your treads or your phase, get the Battle Fury and no one could stop you. It's the same with Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain Battle Fury used to be a thing as well. Those were great. Oh, times. friendly reminder out there, guys, since I'm currently looking at cosmetics. Remember, if you have any cosmetics you've been eyeing for a, a hero that you want to buy off the market, and this is the time to do it. This is when everyone ditches their items to make money to buy compendium levels. So all the items drop in price by like 10% and shit. That's your friendly tip there from Trent Packs. Oh, there are premium player card packs? What does that mean? I don't really they know. They have more to gold be honest. inside of them? I don't know. Compendium. Let me see here. Player cards. Open premium pack. Can I not? I can't highlight it. I guess we'll find out once we actually have the players, eh? Oh, the chat wheel sounds. I've not played these either. Oh, no, they're Wow! <laughs> They've actually got LDs. Wow. Oh, it's actually his? I didn't know if it was going to be like a hero saying it or if it would actually be the... I saw Vlat was very angry. She was not happy. Who was not happy, sorry? Uh, Vlat. Oh, was yeah. Tweeting. yeah. <laughs> not, not, please. I mean, they have to they've, they've got like three LD lines. Oh, yo, in the multiplayer campaign, Siltbreaker? Give me some of that. I love PvE stuff in Dota. Oh, like all... I love all of those events. Wraith Knight and all that shit. And now we're getting a campaign? Ugh! I'm so hyped. I love that. Diablo Dota, guys. Arriving later this month, the sands of fate. In the deepest recesses of Dark Reef Prison, a dormant evil stirs. The fiendish Siltbreaker, waking to thoughts of freedom and a campaign of retribution to come. Only in the hearts of the Calibor Desert might we find the means to stop him. Our final chance is to seize that, a shard That literally of sounds like the, Di the Diablo 3 campaign where you're in that big desert place. Oh, I didn't play much of Diablo 3. Valve just oh, stealing more desert, stuff from Blizzard. Desert Shake my head. Baby Roshan, sick. It's kind of, I don't know. Odin Pixel had a very funny tweet this morning of it. Oh, yeah? It was like after a night of bangers and fish and chips or something like that because it just looks like kinda, there's like diarrhea flying out of him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Diar have, you not, have you not seen it? Oh, it doesn't have the effect on him anymore for some reason. I'm going to have to find it. When you look at this, when you look at this, like, this courier, there's just like a bunch of, why, why isn't it working now? Because it was the ambient effect a bug? isn't showing for some reason. <laughs> They've turned it off. They've turned it off. They actually. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it was pretty bad. You'll have to look it. I I'll link it to you. Uh, Trent, what? How do I change my battle cup tier? How do? You what do you mean? Isn't it? They changed it. No, but I'm like for some reason I'm tier seven when I'm a shit player. Oh yeah, no, that that's not allowed. All my friends are tier five. I want to be tier five too. <laughs> I want to come down and win. Seriously. Hi. Well, that's, that's the thing, right? Like, being a 5k MMR player at tier 7 is like the dumbest thing in the world. True. Because I get matched against 8ks all the time. You get wrecked. Seems he has stomach problems. Oh, dear. Uh. Huh. Hmm. Thinking. Well... Oh, I, I skyped you the, the, the tweet. Oh, yeah, I, see, I see, see the video. Do you see what I mean? Like, that is just... Whew. Oh, wow. He's just shitting rocks. Yeah, that's basically what it looks like. <laughs> that is really bad. Well, we can't stay paused forever, obviously. Helga's got the strats. I like it. Uh, Helga's well, dropping well, the, I mean, the we, truth. We can. Obviously, we technically can. But we shouldn't, because I don't want to. Maybe I do. I'm, I'm enjoying this our lovely time here together, aren't you? What's wrong I, with you? I just wish we could go and play a different game while we're waiting. <laughs> like Siltbreaker! Like New Silt campaign Breaker. for Dota 2! <laughs> Who's well, uh, open player cards. I, 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 I'm just gonna, re I'm just gonna claim my, uh, my rewards. Let's yeah. name and shame. Who's your biggest battle level, friend? What's the highest level? Sheepstick 1008. <laughs> Sheepstick, please! Yeah, she has spent a lot of money. Oh, restoring connection to the game coordinator. Cool! Everything's happening at once! <laughs> One player has stomach problems and now the game coordinator has gone down. My, mine's only 483, man. Your friends are way better at supporting esports. I mean, just, just wait until 
Wait until Knoxville gets home tonight. This is gonna just fucking skyrocket to like level 2000 or something. Toby is level 155. Uh, max of S2D is, uh, S2D is 327. Dragon Drop is 302. Pyrian Flax is 244. Now the real thing is shaming the people who are only level 1. Mm. That's the true mm. shame, mm. you know? Uh, Sir Action Slax <laughs> is level 1. Sam H. Level Android, 1. Android is level 1. <laughs> oh, fucking Moonduck. JD Ezreal. Hmm, our admin. <laughs> Ryu Dota, level 1. Oh my god, is these people Blitz? just don't love esports. Blitz is level 1. This is shameful. Oh, how, god damn. How very dare they. I do um, have more people who are 75 than level 1, to be fair, which shows how effective this compendium was. People are flaming Diablo in chat. I mean, you're allowed to flame Diablo 3, that's cool. Just don't flame Diablo 2, that's all. See, I, I never played Diablo 1. I didn't. I, I don't know if I was born too early or too late for Diablo 2. I was like born in between or some shit, and I never played Diablo 2. Uh, yeah. Until like four years ago when I first played it, and I was like, huh, this is okay. Uh, then I played. Then Diablo three came out, and I played Diablo three for like seven, eight hours a week in a weekend, and I just got very bored and never played it again. Best. That's fair. Best thirty pounds ever spent. <laughs> but no, no, like these kind of games, like you know, WoW and Diablo, sort of grindy games. I just cannot get. Like, I, it's not my thing. I need like the. I, I wish they just had a little bit of a better story. Diablo three. I thought the story was like kind of okay. I mean, yeah, it wasn't god tier or anything like that, but it, it was all right. It wasn't too bad. I heard they made it much better. Um, yes. Like a year after release. Yeah, they did. That's when I played it. I played it like I did not play during the real money auction house. I I, ca no. I came in during Reaper of Souls, got the expansion. It was pretty fun. Plus, I used to play the Hammered In guy in Diablo 2, so I get to play as a Crusader. I don't know what these mean. I know it's okay. In every game like that, I just pick the like rogue thief, <laughs> dual wield crossbow bitch. You know. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, right, that's cool. I, that's cool. How I play. It's so whenever I play Morrowind or Skyrim or anything like that, whenever I play any kind of, you know, RPG, no matter how much I tell myself at the start, I'm going to play a mage, I'm going to play a warrior, I'm going to be a barbarian crusader and, you know, use long swords and shields, I always get a... F <laughs> like, I always go back to being like a wood elf ranger. Every, yeah, so every, the stealth archer effect. Every time, it's I'm the everyone. stealth archer. Every every too, game. No, it's but, too fun. No, but for me, this has happened since Morrowind came out. This has been happening to me for like a decade. <laughs> it, like every, every, I just want to play every, Daggerfall and suddenly I'm a stealth archer. <laughs> every save file I have for the past like 15 years or whatever is just me being a stealth archer and a wood, a wood elf stealth archer. Every game. Every game. Oh, God. <laughs> we know who's not getting TI invites. <laughs> 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 Should we go back to the name and shame? Who's that's right. That's how, that's how Valve gets you, man. Oh, Heen, Heen is level 13. Lyrical is level seventy-five, so he's done his he's done his duty. He's done his uh, he's done his bit there. Butler is level seventy-five. Trent level seventy-five. Is it time to buy some? Is it time to buy some points, Trent? Purchase levels. Twenty-four levels. Know. Just buy. I, I just want to buy a hundred a hundred hundred euros worth of levels. <laughs> You know, I actually made my way to like 146 or something during the last one without buying any. Like, I didn't even get the bundle oh, wow. to start, but I was a little... And then I did buy, because I, I think it was 150 again. Whatever it was for the Legion Commander one, I bought something just to get there. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, that's my fault right here. Please, like, two, three minutes, we will unpause. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, FN. I don't know, the last two TI compendiums, I kind of went in. I have both of the, both of the uh, shield plaque things. For the level 1000. Wait, you do? Yeah. From wow. five, to, from TI5 and TI6. Look at you supporting esports, dude. I'm a big esports supporter. Failed to load Arcana vote data. Try again later. Well, that's very, thanks, Valve. That's very bad, Trent. My coordinator's still down. My coordinator is logging in, apparently, but has been for yeah, the past same. Like, five minutes. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, what's your, uh, what's your Arcana hero, man? Are you just going to vote for the invoker? What's my Arcana Do you want hero? Femme Voker? Wait, where where do I do this? It's so confusing, Trent. When you click the compendium, it'll say... Oh. Or when you click the battle pass, it, one of the little tab boxes just says Arcana Vote. It's on, like, the main page of the battle pass. Like, above all your levels and rewards and shit. Above all my levels and rewards. Wait, where it says Home Campaign Quests Wager? Yeah, yeah, click Home. 
And then you see level 75 below home, oh my God, and then to right the right it says me. multiplayer no, campaign, yo, yo, it. and then it says Arcana. I, I, I was looking everywhere apart from that specific place somehow. I don't know, I, just, I was like looking here and here and here and here. I, I literally just missed that box right in the middle. I, I can't load it. Yeah. What heroes are there? Everyone, except for Io. Everyone except Io. Very good. I put all my points in the uh, Night Stalker versus Chaos Knight matchup, trying to get Night Stalker into the next round. I think Night Stalker could have a badass Arcana. I'm also probably gonna just go full out on Vengeful Spirit. Oh yeah, um, and Venge Ranger. Venge deserves Dude. some love. If we could get the the Skywrath Scion Venge, you know, uncorrupted Vengeful Spirit, oh, that would be such a sick Arcana. A lyrical She's TI like, confirmed. Level seventy-five. Yep. He's getting in. He's gonna make it this year, man. You too. He's like, I know what I'll do. <laughs> Just buy 200 compendium levels. <laughs> and do my part. The worst part about this pause is that I can't properly look at effigies. Why not? It won't let you? I can't go into showcase mode. Hey. What? It's working for me. Press I. I have a different hotkey. Oh, well, that's what you get. But I can't Should click on the button, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, better find the hockey there, bud. Bollocks. Where is it? Where does it hide? Is it in advanced? Hell if I know. Why don't you know? I, I think I used to be the default one, and then they changed it, but I kept it uh, on I, don't, I, so I don't even know what the name is. I is definitely the default, but I have changed it for spectator hockey. Showcase view. Oh, wait, no, is it still... Is that... An L or an I? That's an I. So it's still on I, but my spectator hockey is overriding that I. That's what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, I've done it. I've done it. We did it. We did it, fam. Woohoo! Any good ones, though? Uh, not really. This axe one is kind of funny looking. Where's the axe one? Uh, dire side, top middle. Dire side, top middle. Like of their base. So, like, to the left of the ancient. Axe. Axe has gone all floppy. <laughs> Looks like a like a lion jumping through the air or something. That headpiece. He's super. He's he's like donkey punching someone. He's about to go in. He's not even holding onto his weapon. His weapon is you know sentient being flying next to him. Spin the wheel. You have a wheel spin and you're not spinning. I can't. It wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me. Oh god. I mean that's just like this is literally what you save your wheel spins for. I mean it, right. le it lets me, but it's Maybe lagging. You were raised in a oh. All right. Well we're back in now. So oh, shit. Are we? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm on the wheel screen, Trent. You've, you've, yeah, you've baited me here. I can't. How do I exit the wheel spin, dude? Dude, how do I exit? How do I exit the wheel spin? <laughs> oh God! Oh God! I'm out. Okay. All right. Nothing happened. Don't worry. Okay, we're fine now. They walked in circles and hit some creeps, guys. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Um, where were we? 23 minutes in. Uh, Empire were kind of. Brand, like dragging this one back. Cloud9. They've got this fat old Wraith King. Oh yeah, they won that fight around the Roche bit. Now they're trying to make the use yeah, of the We have Aegis. Right. Yeah. Uh, how long do we have Aegis for? Another three minutes? Oh, God, I can't even see that TA refraction. Oh, one, two. It's like three minutes left, I think. Or is that two minutes? That's two minutes left. The TA thing is messing with my brain. Oh yeah, that trap is... It's like hurting my eyes to look yeah. at it. <laughs> it's sort of it's because it's flickering like through and on top of the timer. But yeah, there's two minutes left. Don't know why I'm still looking at that. Yeah. So they're moving forward though. Uh, creeps coming. Vector will be down, and they have just King Air up top. All ultis are available. He has no points in upheaval. Okay. So been a while since we've seen this committing of a build. Seeing a lot of like two four four builds lately on Warlock. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you have like a PA Magnus, then Faith of Bonds is just infinitely more powerful. <laughs> Get those lucky crits in. Um, but they have a four staff anyway, so. A jump stun. Ace wants to get into the thick of things already. Ace but is so jacked right now, man. He has that Mjolnir. He really wants to fight. Uh, oh, look at that. C9 are all too to fight up a top lane. Uh, Ghost Stick will die bottom, but they're fighting FN as well as Miboshka barely bringing down the Doombringer while bottom lane will go in. back again. Ace is literally just going in. They dropped the golem on him, but he's still not going to die. He turns back to fight up against Chappie. That Mjolnir static charge doing a lot of work, but now he's up on top of this high ground next to the tier 3, the man to dodge, and Ace is going to die. Diving too far in while Rise was in the background trying to save his mate. But even with his TP, they should be able to clean him up with one more punch. Empire. 
Did pretty decently there. Got some damage in onto the tier 3 top lane. Lost a couple of heroes. But that's just... That, that, like, getting that kind of trade while your opponents have Aegis is like a huge win. Yep, I would rather... Like, the Aegis guy leaves. I'd be pretty happy about that. Is uh, the Radiant. Uh, very well played, though, from the PA, of course, in chat. Just uh, holding on to that Manta, because he was slowed and everything, and like he could have popped off some of those debuffs, but he's just like, no, I'm going to wait for this Wraith King, because I know he's going to try and stun me, and then easy finish, so. Clean up, man. Ace, though. God damn. That guy knows how to play Wraith King. This is how you play the one true <laughs> king, guys. This is why him and Spirit Breaker are the head of few beers heroes. You just go in and good things happen. Spirit Breaker. Good hero. Yeah. I, I was actually confused, like, Ace blinks in aggressively while the rest of his team is running back still. And then when, he his, te th th then when his teammates are all TPing out, he's just like, Right, I'm, go I'm going in again! <laughs> Why the hell not? I've got this guy. Oh, man. Uh, FN, BKB, uh, moving into an Assault Cuirass. Not for the Bloodthorn or anything like that. I guess against hmm. SF, Wraith King is pretty, pretty good. But yeah, Ace is doing it. Ace is going for the Radiance build. I kind of usually expect Blade Mail to get slotted in here at some point, but I guess when you go Especially for the full... Especially against TA and PA. Yeah. I mean, I guess TA, you get the lack of value because of the damn refraction charges, and maybe that's why. Look at him go, though, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe not an Ace. That was a tasty kill on the Doom. But the pressure comes yeah. in top lane with Empire, you know, shoving TA and Magnus up here. I wonder, is Buckler even worth it anymore on Doom? Dyer's mm. top tower is under like, attack. Why is this but like, what difference does this Buckler make in this game? I don't know. I mean, I understand it was a thing. Position 4 Doom, casual Buckler, pretty common stuff. Has to joke, gets stomp. Nice, he will stop the Warlock up here. Poor Warlock. He can't, yeah. he can't go anywhere. Get ditched. It's just like, it felt like, what, he had 15 armor there and he still just got like two shot, so. Yeah. Uh, but And it just like slows down your solar crest a lot, but I'm sure, I mean, I guess it probably just helped out a little bit more early on, so. I guess it just, it feels like it's not as strong as it used to be, though. It like helps you jungling, I think is one of the big things. So you don't have to go like stout shield or anything, so that it basically allows you to skip stout shield and a bunch of regen just by giving you armor. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the fact that you can also shove out lanes, you know, it's, it's a little thing, right? You know, you put it on one of your waves and they can push into the enemy wave stronger. Just pricey though, 800 gold, that's a lot of money for a position 4 who didn't yeah. go Midas or something. Either way, he's got it for now, uh, and he also has a Solar Crest in just a moment and go clean up some of these camps. Well, if it wasn't the fact that he is a TA, this is why Magnus bought that Midas. <laughs> exactly. TA and PA just clear camps and waves in a couple of hits. So difficult to find your farm. But there are the two oh, big items. Anyway. Yeah. What are we looking at for the C9 lads? Ogre sitting on Solar Crest of his own. Rise. Is he building a halberd? As they've caught one. Empire find the reincarnation of the Wraith King. He's not going to be able to blink away, and he's being ripped apart here by Empire. Requiem wound up with the golem dropping, though, cancels it out, and Ace is going to die before he can get too far away. The RP still held on to by Ghosting. They don't quite need it just yet. Chasing down the SF. FN with a double kill, but Baby Knight's the one they really want. The Doom will get the Infernal Blade onto his head, and Chappie blinks forward. Easy one-two punch. Cloud9 oh. get almost wiped off the face of the map. And that was a fight where they used global after both BKBs. So that was like best possible scenario, honestly. Um, at least in terms of your silencer. But uh, losing the, the Wraith King first right off the bat. Felt like he didn't really get to contribute to that fight at all. And as I said, wiped off the map there. So, oh, what do you even do? Look, look at SF's inventory. Yep. He's just like, huh. I need a lot of stuff. I need this, like, MKB. So I go Scotty. There's a random Morbid Mask in there, too. I need Lifesteal. I need Satanic. It is it is a rough place to be as an SF. Needing, like, you need to tank up, and you need to deal with the opponent's evasion. The Solar Crest and the PA's natural evasion. Oh, boy. Then you've got a Templar Assassin running around with a full AC, and now building into that Orchid for the Bloodstone, uh, Bloodthorn. Can you really go Radiant to this point on Wraith King? What else do you buy? I don't know. Like I, don't I, I, I keep thinking about that blade mail, but it's just like... It really is 
Yeah, I think he just kind of has like a crisis of items here where like, yeah, I, I understand the Radiance and it's kind of this classic item and the mischance is very important against these guys, but they have their BKBs. That's the thing, the SF even needs like a Lincoln or something. Maybe a Lotus Orb on one of the supports, but they're nowhere near it. Empire, they're just building for this mid-game power play. And another DD rune out for Chappie. He is not empowered just yet, but Ghost Stick will be moving over. And oh, they don't have vision up on this high ground just yet. They're able to go into the pit and take down Roshan. Dire oh, know there are a couple in. heroes down here. They could think about like trying to move in if they spotted them. Chappie's a little scared. King R and Uposhka, they haven't moved in just yet. Spot all three mid with that ward too. So they know they're moving down here. And the Dyer think they're being sneaky. But they're not. And they've actually moved back into the Roche pit through the north. Chappie and FN sneak it out. And Cloud9. All oh, because of this ward. Yeah. Just gave them everything. Cloud9 full retreat now. Go hide at your shrine. Go hide somewhere. Farm ancients. Empire just need to push out bot lane and commit to mid tier 2. Look for a fight mid even. C9, Ryze has been spotted, the sentry's dropped. So Observer Ward's still playing a good part though, as Hester Joe goes for the blink stomp on TA to slow their advance, but C9, they have to turn tail and run, surely. They don't want to be fighting into an Aegis with an RP behind. This could be uh, the beginning of the end here for Cloud9. 5,400 gold lead. They're just going to knock down a tower. Now it's 6,600. And I don't see any signs of them slowing down. They're just looking for that one fatal mistake. Looks uh, looking for a blink skewer. Look at where the TA is now. Top over the net worth. The one CS TA. The one CS at three minutes TA or whatever it was. Oh, okay. Good stuff. Skewer back. I've caught Ace. Top is reincarnation and Ghost Sticks dropping low with the BKBs there. And so is that Chaotic Offering, the RP not going to land, he blinks himself back and away, but they've still found the Centaur, and now the blank Blink Bash from the PA over onto the SF, Baby Knight forces them back though, the BKBs are being worn down here of Empire, and FN was left alone, his 8 kill streak taken away by Ace, Baby Knight still on the chase, still redges up the TPs from Empire to get them away, but Maposhka will be the sacrifice at least there. That was good, they really needed that secondary kill. So that's, uh, that's not too bad. Take care of the Aegis. Get yourself a couple kills. All it costs you is a Centaur Warrunner buyback. They got the tier three. That's true. The shrines will tier. be opened up, I suppose. This should make my life easier. And overall, it looks like, uh, in terms of the net worth, it's gonna stay pretty heavily in the ratings favor. Maybe they can move that a bit with some farming here. Go sick, the blink, he's out of there. It's getting a little bit dicey. But yeah, that was that was Ghostic BKB and RP pretty much being ineffectual. Yeah, he, he tried to RP Ace as, well. as he came back up from reincarnation, but like slightly mistimed it. Yeah, it looked weird. Like the it looked like the blink animation had actually moved to where he had been RP too, like from the movement, and he still didn't get RP. It was like crazy close timing. Radiance top tower. So Cloud Nine get a tier two for their troubles, and that's a Radiance. Oh, he switched over. He just bought the Demon Edge instead. And he just oh, like... MKB. Yeah. Good choice. Scardy done for Baby Knight. Moving into Butterfly next. So he's not going for MKB anymore. It looks like. Yeah, he'll let Wraith King handle that, I suppose. And Happy enough with the Silver Edge for now, I guess. Yeah. Then this way, we'll just focus that. Uh, you know, we'll kind of shift it over. But uh, the Bloodthorn will be coming over soon for old FN. See, that's the trouble, right? I'm looking at this SF with no BKB and no Manta style. Yeah, you, they you, do really need that Lotus. Or no Lincolns. Like, you're going to get Doomed or Bloodthorned or uh, like Daggered and crit it down. Maybe not just going for the raw stats build to try and tank up and deal with it. Actually, yeah, no BKB for either of these C9 cores. But I guess as the game goes longer and longer, and the fact that Radiant bought their BKB so early, there is some kind of, you know, almost like meta advantage there to have. The fact that you can later on, if you're able to draw the game out, go for a later BKB and have it be the 10 oh, second one. Speaking of BKBs, FN. 
quite the button hit there. Lag? <laughs> <laughs> I believe his brain has just lagged a little. Just testing it out. Make sure it works. And there's our 10% damage cleave boost. Pretty nice game to slap that town on your hero. We're all moving in for the tier 2 bot lane though. I'm not trying to take a lane of Rax here. Empire just want to kind of poke and prod at Cloud9 and make them fight outside of their base. Force some buybacks again, maybe? Because they're, they're pushing into a, like a fresh lane with fresh shrines and they can't really go mid either because there's like three shrines there, but that's a great scan. The Radiant scan behind them and they know there are heroes from Cloud9 coming in from the southwest. This fight is pretty much all on Ghost Tick. King R Glimmers. Observer Ward's not going to spot him just yet. They might catch a glimpse of him though. King R, he can turn and rock now if he wants to, but he's caught by the Centaur and immediately blown up. The Doom comes through the... Oh, Mag! Actually silence. He popped his BKB too early on and Roy's here catches him before he can get the RP down. Now the SF wails away at him. Ace is chasing down the TA to break up this team fight even further. In the meantime, in the background is Chappie. Goes for the two hits, kills the Ogre and now looks for Ace. Kills him off as well, and they turn back onto the SF. Baby Knight has to run away, tail between legs, but Chappie finds the kill. Regardless of that RP not landing, regardless of the silence, Ace will try and TP himself away, and with a blitz stomp from Hester, Joe will succeed. But I think he's going to give his life away from this. With FN jumping forward, they'll find Rise with one more hit, and they've killed the Hester Joe as well. Four for two. And that fight was as close to perfect as C9 gets it. Tell you, Chappie had a hell of a bash that fight, though. When Ace blinked on top of him and tried to man up, because, yeah, it's a Wraith King, it's at like 20% HP, but he had his ulti, and of course, he might just chomp right through you. Is that PA since he had the MKB, but a very fortunate bash comes out from the Skull Bash and stops it from the track. Ace has his ulti again, but no blink to get away from this. The buyback from the SF, but the golem's dropped and Ace obliterated. Oh, baby knight, you have blinked into a difficult situation. Invis under a sentry, even for a second, can leave you with hell to pay as the bash comes out again from Chappie, taking Baby Knight down to half HP, another bash, and even more bashes, just wailing away at the Shadow Fiend, and this might be it. Cloud9 lose Ace again, and with no buybacks God. available, GG is cold. Wow, an early lead from Cloud9, taken away. Yet again. TA. Terrible laning stage. Of course, to be expected, of course, the Ogre and the, the Shadow Fiend. No flame on FN. Uh, except for that one death. Slight flame on FN. But he recovered. Came back strong. And uh, Magnus PA. Who would have thought? Good combo. Very, very good combo. Only game one of a best of three, though. Game coordinator still logging in. Hopefully, we can get through.